All right, so we are going to go ahead and get started. It looks like we are still slowly growing in participants down there. So welcome as you all come in. Thank you for joining us for this Scholarships for International Students segment of Shorelight's Smart Savings webinar. My name is Allie. I'm an account manager with Shorelight, and I'll be moderating this portion of today's event. Today, I'm joined by Kristen Crosby, who's the Director of International Admission at Ohio Wesleyan University, and Joy Parmagraph, who is the Director of International and Transfer Recruitment at Randolph College. They're very excited to speak to you about their institutions and everything that they have to offer. We ask that all participants remain um, throughout the whole session using the Q&A buttons along the bottom to ask questions. Please refrain from using the chat feature. We'll be moderating the Q&A and we'll get to those at the end. So just because I haven't gotten to your question in the middle of the webinar doesn't mean we won't get to it. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Kristen Crosby to begin her presentation. Okay, let me just uh, set that to the first slide. Hello, <clears throat> I'm happy to be here today. I'm Kristen Crosby, and I've been um, working in the field of international admission for decades. Um, and hopefully I've got some tips and I might ask my colleague Joy to jump in and share this presentation with me, but uh, this is really focusing on <clears throat> making a U.S. degree more affordable. It's not about how to apply for financial aid or the different kinds of financial aid, but really some tips on how to make uh, a degree more affordable. So um, with that, we'll get started. And oops, I'd say that the first five mistakes I'd like to highlight for international students is just diving into the college search and not discussing your budget with your parents. Uh, there are some really large purchases in life that people make, whether it's um, a car, some families have the luxury of owning a home or even renting. Um, and, and just as you would have a budget for those large purchases, you really have to talk about your budget for affording a US education. And sometimes students fall in love with colleges and universities that are beyond their budget that don't offer financial aid or merit scholarships or meet full demonstrated need. Also, sometimes students might just take a look at the schools that they've heard of, uh, or they might just go based on rankings, brand name, famous universities, or limit themselves to locations that they've heard of. And by doing that, um, they're not really doing that research to see, do those schools offer scholarships? Do they meet need? Um, how hard are they to get into? And, you know, there are so many wonderful places throughout the United States. You don't want to uh, rule things out just based on location. And then I think that oftentimes students hear of universities with the state name in it, um, maybe, you know, Michigan State, Penn State, University of California, Los Angeles, um, and they think that state schools may be affordable, um, but there are very big differences, which is for another presentation on public institutions versus private and whether or not they provide financial assistance to international students. And then the last mistake, it is an important one. Sometimes students might miss a deadline to apply for a scholarship or even just to apply for admission, or they might not get all that information in on time, especially some financial information like a financial aid form. And that could mean a student missing out on an opportunity. It's really important to think that you've got to broaden your search. And Christine Chu, who is a former assistant director of undergrad admissions at Yale and Georgetown, said that brand does not equate with quality. And so if you're limiting your search by brand as an international student, you're missing out on hundreds, maybe even thousands of US schools that offer amazing undergraduate programs, experiences, dedicated faculty, resources, and smaller class sizes, 
plus they might have financial options for you. So don't just go with the most highly ranked, most famous universities that you've heard of. Um, Joy, I don't know if you wanna talk about uh, what goes into the cost of education. Um, if this is too confusing, I can jump in here, but direct and indirect costs. Or I can cover this one if you want to cover the next one. Yeah. So when you are thinking about how to pay for college and what goes into the cost of education, they're going to be your direct costs, which you can think of as the costs that are billed by the university. Tuition. Everybody knows that tuition is one of those big costs. And then many colleges and universities will also have housing and meal plans. And some might only offer that for a year, and then you're on your own to figure out where to live. Some, like Ohio Wesleyan and probably Randolph College, are going to actually want you to live on campus for all four years. And so those build costs of housing and meals are something that you need to factor in for. And then there are going to be indirect costs, which might not be billed by the university, but they're still a part of your college costs. And those could be books, supplies, if you're a science or an art or some other kind of major, other equipment rentals, um, your travel costs to get to and from the United States, as well as spending money other travel costs to get around the U.S., maybe during breaks. So there are things that you have to be aware of, and your budget should be a little bit bigger than just the cost that you see advertised on a college website. And Kristen, can I add to that health insurance? Yes, yes, is that's another, an important one. An unexpected cost, but it is required by us to but that all internationals have a specific level of health insurance. And that can usually run around a couple thousand dollars per year. But, yep. you know, there are students each year who might fall sick, break a leg. Uh, and so having that health insurance really makes a big difference in knowing that you have that, that level of care. All right. Um, I've got just some tips on how to uh, maybe consider saving for college. And the first tip is that you might be able to finish in fewer than four years. If you're looking at state or large universities, this may not be the case because at very large universities with 20, 30, 40,000 students, sometimes it can take as long as five or six years to graduate. But at small institutions, Ohio Wesleyan has 1,500. How many students does Randolph College have, Joy? We're at 650. Mm -hmm. So, in those small institutions, we make it a point to help you graduate in that four years, and you might even be able to do it in less. If um, I've got some tips on the next slide, um, Joy, do you want to comment on these tips on how to graduate perhaps in fewer than four years? Yeah, I was going to say, um, I'm, I'm hoping that the students that are listening are possibly in the advanced level courses. Um, the AP credits, A-levels, the IB, love the International Baccalaureate. Um, at Randolph, we accept five, six, or sevens on the higher level exams. Um, A-levels, obviously, Cs are higher. And AP credits, we are fours and fives for the exam. How about y'all, Kristen? Exactly the same at Ohio Wesleyan. Yeah. Um, maybe you have taken an extra course um, maybe through a local university, some may be um, able to get college credit for that as well. And, um, you know, that cushion of having 15 credit hours come in, you could graduate a semester early, or you could add on possibly another major or another minor. So it just gives you a little bit of a cushion when you have that. We've got what we call the Randolph plan that literally will lay out your four years or less, depending on what credits that you bring in. Do you have something similar, Kristen? Uh, yes, we have something similar. Um, and the other thing that many, at least small colleges and universities offer that I've worked at, um, at Ohio Wesleyan, maybe it's the same at Randolph College, 
The typical course load for a semester is four courses, but for the same cost, you can take a fifth class. Uh, so if you're a really strong student, and for many of those who have done those A-levels and IBs or French baccalaureate, really rigorous curriculum, you can handle that extra class. And by adding one extra class, even just once a year, or even a summer class, that's another way that you could take off a semester of your time in college so you could graduate early. Do you offer that kind of option, Joy? Our academic model is a little bit different. I'll talk about it in our mass session. Okay. All right. Number two, pretty straightforward. Get a lot of questions from international students. Can you get a campus job? It will vary a little bit from university to university, but I would say that it is possible to get a campus job on many colleges and universities. There are some things to keep in mind. As an international student on an F1 visa, you can only work on campus. So you can't go and work at a restaurant or work in an office building or get a job at the local mall. Um, you've got to work on campus. And no, jobs, oh, sorry, yeah. no babysitting for professors. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so it's got to be on campus, um, but there are ways that we publicize the jobs when they become available, and um, many of us have ample opportunities for students to get a job on campus. Jobs are, for the most part, paid by an hourly rate, so what you earn dep depends on the hours you work, and the good news is Departments on campus can be flexible if it's finals or midterms, um, or you've got to miss a, a date because you've got uh, some kind of tournament to go to. So there's flexibility. Um, you are limited to working 20 hours, but I will say that's a lot. And a job doesn't necessarily guarantee a full 20 hours of work each week. So don't think that that's going to happen. Um, the average is usually five, eight hours a week, maybe 10 every once in a while. And you have a wide option from tutoring, working in dining surfaces, offices, being an admissions tour guide, working in a lab. So there are a lot of jobs to choose from. And um, the answer is yes, but don't think that you can pay your way through college with a campus job. You can't earn enough money to do that. It might just be enough to cover airfare or books or insurance or spending money. All right, um, loan options, not always gonna be an option for everybody. Um, Ohio Wesleyan does not offer loans. Joy, does Randolph? No, many colleges and universities do not offer loans to international students and even banks in the US and lenders uh, are very strict about requiring a US co-signer. So don't think that you can come to the US and get a loan or that you'll be given a loan from the universities that you're applying to. And there really are not a lot of lenders that I know of. I just know of a few, Empower Financing, Paris Loans, um, if you are a student from Latin America and you've already started your U.S. education, there are Leo S. Rowe funds for Latin Americans. Some countries, I know India is one, offer uh, specific educational loans, but many countries do not. Joy, do you know of any other sources? I actually think Discover is an option. We've had a student from the Caribbean that took advantage of that, but she also had a co-signer that is, was a U.S. citizen or permanent resident. Yeah, I know Discover used to be a great option, and I've heard that they might have changed things a bit, so mm -hmm. that's why I didn't include them. But um, Research. Got to yeah. do research on this, for sure. All right. Comparing your offers. Do your research here too. Once you've applied and you've gotten your acceptances, you wanna compare the fees. Visit university websites, see if there are extra fees that haven't been included in your letter. Um, compare meal plans. We have unlimited meal plans. And so when we package a student, um, whatever meal plan you select or whatever one we put in your financial aid offer, it's an unlimited meal plan. And there are some universities that will use the 14 meal plan um, as you know, their standard 
offering in their admission offer. So if you're a kid who needs to eat three times a day, that means your meal plan is going to cost a little bit more. Um, look at the estimated costs. Right now, students are sharing with me their offers from other universities, and I'm like, hmm, these are this year's costs. Next year's costs, when you're going to be enrolling, are going to be higher. So it sounds like I'm stating the obvious, but make sure that you're comparing the academic year costs. Is it 24 to 25 for both letters, or is one of them just showing you 23 to 24? And there are ways to kind of figure out your um, percentage of your scholarship. It's dividing your tuition and fees um, by the, the scholarship. Um, any other ideas that you can think of for comparing awards? No, that is perfect though. All right. And then this one, again, kind of like loans, there are not a lot of outside or private scholarships that I'm aware of, but they do exist in certain countries and organizations. So if you're really into doing your research, um, there may be some offered by local businesses, NGOs, nonprofit organizations, your government. Um, you definitely have to apply for those separately from each program. And you may be competing locally um, in your city or in your country. Uh, or even internationally. I know something like the, the MasterCard Foundation and the RISE Scholarship, uh, those have students applying from all over the world. And admission officers might not know about all of these scholarships, so we can't give you advice on ones to apply to. Um, and it's a good idea that if you have applied for an outside scholarship, that you submit something on that scholarship to the admission office so we can add it to your application portal so we know that it might be a source of funds for you. And remember, um, do not pay for financial advice for scholarships. That's always a scam. Yeah. All right, I think this is my last slide before we can dive into our own institutions briefly. Joy, I don't know if you wanna think of any other ways to save. Um, do you offer tuition payment plans? We do. Ours is 10 months and you have to register for it though by yeah. June 1. Yes, ours, we break it up into um, <clears throat> either four payments a semester or three per semester. And you also have to register in advance. I think July is ours. Um, so it is possible to break up those payments. And sometimes there can be a little fee for that as well. I think it's $40 a semester to have that convenience. Um, utilizing any savings or home equity, selecting your college dorm or meal plan carefully. You know, some students think, oh, I want to live in a single or a fancy apartment. Um, but it might just be the cheapest option to live in a double for a few years. You might also be able to apply to work in the residence hall as an advisor, kind of a mentor. Um, many colleges and universities offer that as an option, certainly something you can't do your first year, not even your second year. Usually you've got to be a junior, third year, or a senior, your last year, to get those jobs. And sometimes it might be completely free housing or free meal plan. Sometimes it might just be a discount or a stipend. Uh, Joy, do you offer those positions on your campus? We do, yeah. Um, working and saving your earnings during the summer. So it could be a campus job, could even be getting an internship and could be an internship in the US, could be an internship in another country. Not all internships are paid, um, but if you're one of the lucky students who can get a paid internship and save up some of those earnings, that can help. Buying used textbooks or buying books online is a way. Um, and the last thing I want to mention, especially because Joy and I work for residential campuses that believe in students living together, uh, I get this question all the time, can I live off campus and save money? It's not necessarily going to save money to live off campus because you've got to buy the furniture and pots and pans and grocery shop. You might have to pay to commute to campus. Um, and there are costs of things like heat and Wi-Fi, internet. So it's not necessarily going to be cheaper to live off campus. And we believe in having that support for you 24 hours a day, 
Um, we want to take some of those stresses off of life for you by helping you um, with a furnished room and a place to do your laundry and a place you can walk to to get all your meals prepared. So um, it is a, a convenience for you as a way to save. Um, just a couple slides about Ohio Wesleyan and then I'll turn it over to Joy. Uh, we have one level of scholarship for international students. The good news is it's awarded to all international students we admit, regardless of your GPA or test score. It's $30,000 per year. Um, overall, 99% of our students receive scholarships and need-based aid. And there are over 70 majors at Ohio Wesleyan. 100% um, of our students do research or internships because it's required to graduate, and so it's guaranteed. And in addition to that $30,000 per year, students can also apply for some need-based financial aid. Um, we have funding for internships, funding for research. They're guaranteed, and you can start doing research your first year, internships after your first year. When you apply to Ohio Wesleyan, you'll get an admission decision in three weeks. And even though our deadline was just March 1st, we will be happy to accept late applications. Uh, we have study abroad programs in over 50 countries and semester programs in Washington, DC, New York City, Philadelphia, and Chicago. And where we're located is a small, safe city, um, two minute walk from campus called Delaware, Ohio, and we're 30 minutes from Columbus, Ohio, which has an international airport and is the 14th largest city in the US. Um, that's it for my slides. So I'll stop sharing and I'll let Joy share her slides. Thanks, Kristen. Kristen and I traveled together way back when. So we know each other really well. Is it showing? Yes, great. All right, so we are in Lynchburg, Virginia. Um, we are located on the East Coast, three hours south of Washington, D.C. Um, easy train ride to D.C., to New York City, um, even down to New Orleans if you want to. So great location to easily travel around the U.S. The college itself is about 100 acres, so very small. Um, like I said before, we do have about 650 students, very small and so part of what we're going to talk about with the scholarship is what am I going to get with what I pay when I attend Randolph. So this personalized attention that you're going to receive. We do have about 32 majors. Some of our most recent ones that we have added is criminal justice and criminology, robotics and mechatronics. Um, our most popular majors are in the STEM field, um, history, psychology, and English. So we do have a couple of graduate programs as well. And when we were talking about academic models, we do not do your typical four to six classes at one time during a semester. We started take two a couple of years ago, and it gives you the option to take two classes, which are four credit hours each, for seven weeks, a week off, and then two more new classes. You can take a third class, but this is intensive learning. We don't recommend it, um, but students have done it. And um, we've seen success, more students on Dean's List, writing has improved. You obviously can't skip class. You skip a class, it's equal to like a week of classes. So um, it has worked out really well for us and we're excited for take two. And then of course, how is all of this, you know, the support that you have at Randolph? We've got some transition programs. Um, the most popular one is our super program, which is our STEM honors program. Students come in two weeks before classes begin and have a four credit hour class about um, STEM. Um, they've taken field trips to a local amusement park to study the physics of roller coasters. 
uh, they're just different ways that that this group can learn more um, about fun activities, um, but it's free. So any STEM students, it is a separate application. Once you've been admitted, I can get all that information to you. And of course, career development is going to help you with your internships, um, externships, job placement. Um, use that OPT after you graduate. You know, as a STEM major, you can get three years of OPT. Um, and then, of course, academic services. We see a lot of our international students are tutors. Um, that is free for students. Um, writing lab for students whose first language isn't English sometimes might access that. Again, this is all free. And, of course, advising. Smaller school setting, your advisors are going to know you so well. Um, same with the professors. You'll get invited to their houses for dinner. I mean, it, it really is exciting. Um, and then our merit scholarships, our tuition for 24-25 is about $29,000. So every student will receive a minimum of 13,000. And then depending on what your grade point average is, you would add up to, it could be up to an additional $5,000. And that's at the time of admission. Once you are a Randolph student, some of the options that are available to you, summer research, it's eight weeks right after graduation, $3,500, you're working one-on-one -on -one with a faculty member. Our RISE grant, which is Randolph Innovative Student Experience, more of this experiential learning outside of the classroom. Maybe there's a psychology conference that you want to attend across the US in Los Angeles, California, the grant would pay for your airfare, your lodging, and your food. Some students have used this over two years, but the maximum amount is $2,000. And then of course, internship grant. Kristen talked about how some internships aren't necessarily paid and you have to be able to live. Um, so we would pay up to $4,000 to the students um, for their internship if they needed it. And then just my contact details, I do use WhatsApp, text a lot with students. Again, that personalized attention. I'm sure Kristen is the same way. So thank you, what questions? So I think our team has done a pretty good job of moderating everything that has come through the chat. Um, so if there is anything else, please throw it in the Q&A. Um, it just kind of gives us a better place to be able to answer everything. Um, we will try to get to any questions that come through. I know we are just over time. So if you feel the need to go to a different session, I know there's another one coming up um, that probably just started. So feel free to go ahead and jump sessions. I know we have a lot of good things going on today. If you do still have questions, we'll be in here for a few minutes and we'll just make sure that we're moderating that Q&A chat box. I think we have one student who's uh, raised their hand. We do. Lauren, do you know how to allow them? Oh, there we go. Got it. Sorry about that. Chintan, you can you should be able to unmute and ask your question. And Joy, you Joy, you have a question in the chat box too, or the Q and A. Okay, thank you. Um, in terms of Timothy's question, <clears throat> it will depend from university to university um, if they're willing to accept just first class or second or third class uh, level grades and a higher national diploma. Typically, we need to see your transcript of your grades from high school. So sometimes students think, I'll just send that diploma or the school leaving exams. Um, but we need to see your progress over three or four years of high school 
So we'll need to see your transcript, which should be sent by your school. Um, it should be an official one. Jasper, I know you had your hand up as well. If you want to come off mute and ask your question, you're welcome to. If you've asked a question in the chat, we are getting to them. So just keep checking back. We're getting to them one by one. There were a few in there. Sorry. That's okay. Did you have a question for us? Yes. What was your question? How to get the scholarship? So generally, if you're applying through Shorelight, there are some scholarships that are kind of already set. Um, also within the admissions process, as the schools review, they'll decide um, as if they have a varying scholarship, if they had a, a range, they'll decide where you fall in that range. A lot of times it's based on your academic history, those classes that you took, GPAs, things like that. Okay, I already study in uh, uh, University of People, then I have a GPA is three. So can I apply in for a scholarship or the, or not? So you'll always be able to apply for a scholarship. Um, what we can't say right now is what amount of scholarship you're going to get at each school. We can't say that at the moment, but if you apply to these schools, then we'll be able to review the application and make a decision then. Oh, okay, uh, thank you. I'm sorry, Ali, Joy, and Chris, uh, Kristen, I'm, I apologize, but I think we need to wrap up. There's another session that has started, and they're waiting for folks to come into the next room. So, uh, but please know, everyone, if you have specific questions for, for Joy or for Kristen, you can do that through your agent or through, through Shorelight team. We will get those, uh, those questions answered, and we hope that you'll take a more serious look at these wonderful schools. But I think we need to, uh, to probably finish up this session. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and end the session for everyone. As Lauren said, please reach out to your agents. Please reach out to the reps from each school if you have specific questions for them. Thank you guys for joining. Thank you.